I mean, hey, bro, if you want to date a bunch of Shaniquas, go for it, man. LaQuisha. I, yeah. Like, I, me and Fresh aren't really down with the brown nah, like that. Man. We ain't night Riders. Nah, so bro, I'm good. Uh, you know, sometimes if they're, you know, Redbone, but like in general, me and Fresh uh, don't dabble in the dark, if you know what I'm saying. Marlon is not black. Marlon from Fresh and Fit is not black. He should not get away with disrespecting black women like that. He's not black. He's from the Middle East. Let's be real. Okay. So, guys. Let him prove it. Is he black? Prove it, Marlon. Prove that if you're watching this, Marlon, prove that you're black. You're not, you're not black. You shouldn't be allowed to talk to women like that, black women like that. He looks like he's from the Middle East, and he always claims the Middle East. So Marlon, prove, prove, prove that you are a black man if you really are. Prove that somewhere in your DNA is African ancestry. Don't try and Lucy me. Don't use Lucy. Do not use Lucy. I need proof. In the last 500 years or less, there are traces of the African ancestry in your bloodstream. And if there aren't, then you should not be allowed to disrespect black women and get away with it. By now, I'm sure you've seen the clip of Fresh and Fit uh, degrading and insulting black women for no reason crazy so they go on this podcast flagrant Flag flagrant two um and let's like react to some of the stuff that's being said here so regarding black women per se like dude like my thing is like we're in a, in a space where like people are targeted especially the black people per se black white yeah, yeah and it's like whatever you say can be used to the extreme so what we said was kind of like i want to say uh not funny to them but to us, it's like, we're just cracking jokes, trying to be... You're being hyperbolic about your dating preferences, yeah, right? That's much. kind of how I took it, to be honest with you. Yeah. But I think a lot. I think you can... You see, this guy's just being an ally, and it's like, okay, it's okay what you said, it's funny. Understand how the internet might have taken it, mm -hmm. right? And, and then doubling down and being like, it's okay to have this as a yeah. preference that you... Do. Like, usually your preference is what you like, not what you don't. Exactly. I think that was the biggest issue. Like, if you just yes. like, hey, my preferences, I kind of like Latinas. I don't even think you get any pushback. But saying my preferences, I don't like that. That's, I think, where people start to feel rejected. And then they and, go, why Why don't you like me, man? Like, and what's also wrong? the yeah. way they said they didn't like it. I don't think anybody feels rejected by these two. <laughs> it's just, it's just like, seriously, I don't think anyone feels rejected by them. I just think that it's offensive as much abuse that black women receive in the media, in society, in general. It's offensive to see two ugly black men <laughs> come after black women. That's just literally, I just like, or two black, well, well, I don't see, I don't think he's black. I think he's Arab. I think this is an Arab and this is a black guy. It's just offensive to see them do that. Um, and if people found out that this guy, Marlon, is Arab, if they found out that he's not black, he would be over. And people are sweeping this all under the rug and he's really disguising his race. I want him to prove that he's black. I literally want to, him to prove it. And I know it sounds terrible, but <laughs> if you're gonna pull this black card, prove that you are even black, that you can even get away with saying this. Cause I don't think this guy is black. Like that's, that's what I, was like bothered by the clip it's like you guys go out of your way to say what you don't like even though that's not what you're discussing it's like your preference is what you do like but then the way in which you went about how you don't like black women oh i don't like the ratchet i don't like the ghetto i don't like the shanique was like that's like if you are a white person saying all that that's racist shit. and i'm just disappointed in you guys as black if even if you're a black person saying it that's racist <laughs> Even as a black person saying it, that is racist. People just, people let black people get away with racism. And personally, I've experienced a lot of internalized racism from black people. Black people should not be able to get away with racism towards their own kind. So that's my issue with like the way that people are redefining the word racism. No, race, you can be racist to your own people. And that what they said there is self hate, it's self -hate hating internalized racism but this guy marlon is not black he's not black i'm sorry i do not believe that he's black men to be talking about our sisters like that so you don't have a problem with the way you spoke about your sisters like that like if, if that if it was him saying the same thing 
you would be upset. No. No, so because if he was like, oh, I don't like ghetto black women. I don't like Shaniqua. It, it wouldn't bother me. That's a preference. Wow. Because, because the thing that's, is, is that. That's lame. I, it, yeah, it's not, not going to bother you because you're not black. <laughs> this guy's not black. I, the only thing I can control is my reactions to what happens in the world. Like the world mm. is not a fun. It's not like a, a rosy place where everyone is going to not be biased or not be racist or whatever. Like I understand that there's going to be people that are inherently racist. It is what it is. The only thing I can control is my emotions to it. So I don't get mad about what people say because that's just the way things are. Yeah. I don't, the world doesn't owe me understanding. So I, all I, I can do is I, control. Real quick, real quick. I, you know what's weird is like, so the word racist keeps getting me thrown out. Like I don't, I, I never saw it as racist because I don't know. I, did, I didn't, I didn't believe. Of course you don't because you're white and white people love to like act racist and do racist things and gaslight it and call it not racist. How is saying Calling a black woman a night rider and we do not touch night riders and all the crap crappy things they say. How is that not racist? Of course a white person is gonna claim that it's not racist, ridiculous. And white people have really gotten away with gaslighting racism. And that's just I it, I, I just feel like I know this is his show, but he's not he shouldn't even be in this room. He should not even be speaking right now. He should be quiet. Because it's especially as a white person and who who has been around white people saying these things that are racist been around this these types of conversations he's not a, he's of course he's not going to see it as racist when a black person says it because it's like oh you're excused from saying it because you're black no 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 you don't get excused for saying racist things because you're the same race these guys saying this that is internalized racism and this white guy is not going to see that um but that's sort of the system the white supremacy has built. It's built loopholes to allow and enable the perpetuation of white supremacy and racism towards black people. Eve that you guys wouldn't date a beautiful black woman. Yeah, we have like, past for sure. Yeah, like I, yeah. I just didn't believe that. And again, you guys can correct me, but yeah. like for me, the word like pre whether you believe it or not does not mean that it's not racist. <laughs> Preference is so weird because I think our preferences are really like mechanisms that we use to find like emotional security. You know, like if 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 a, if a person's like trust a white person, I'm sorry, to navigate the conversation away, away <laughs> from ra from the racist dialogue to move the conversation somewhere else to gaslight. This is what he's doing in this conversation. These guys are really coming after them and they're really grilling them and they're actually asking and st making important points, which we need to dr drill it in their heads. But he's out here steering the ship somewhere else. Super quiet. Like if I'm like this quiet, like shy dude, I, my preference is probably an aggressive girl mm -hmm. because she allows me to be in my safe place. Right. I don't have to go like out of my way to go get her. And I'll probably prefer that girl but it's not based on like this chemistry thing it's really based on like what allows me to feel like emotionally secure right and like let's say i'm i'm a controlling ass dude i probably want a girl that is a little bit more like in need of guidance because submissive. yeah submissive because then i get to feel my safe place which is controlling right so like i feel like if a girl and again i can't speak for y'all but i feel like if a girl gave you that emotional security regardless of what race they were you guys would date them, no? I can't feel like here's just because about, they're they're black, you would say no. Yeah, here's the thing about the clip. Context, like, context. like I said, it's context. It's yeah. us having a good time. It's us making jokes. We make fun of everyone. It's just that they don't clip all the other segments. Having a good time insulting black women. Interesting. Having a joke. Oh, wow. I just want to change the context here a little bit. Imagine, and this is like just very disgusting but imagine if they were talking about pedophilia and talking about enjoying pedophilia and they and they said some really offensive shit uh, around that and then they all of a sudden say oh we're just joking it's just funny would you take it seriously would you find it funny would you excuse them for making the joke and before people try to stir the ship, I know a lot of people will try and gaslight me saying, oh, how could you compare it to pedophilia? It's so different. How dare you compare it to pedophilia? Again, that was an example. And in my view, 
even though pedophilia is like probably the worst thing that anybody can do on the planet. But in my view, the abuse that uh, uh, when you look at the history of of uh, of racism, especially towards black women and black men, and black men, black men are not exempt. But the the history, the racialized past, the abuse that black people have suffered, especially in America, because of racism. And being able to get away with in continuing to insult black people, that to me is un- unacceptable. And equally as unacceptable of a conversation as having a disgusting conversation about pedophilia. All equally disgusting. So to me, passing it off, oh, it's just funny, it's just a joke. That's gaslighting. Of us making jokes on everyone else, they want to clip that one sec- that one section at 20, 30 seconds. Say that you know, try to paint a narrative. You guys are racist, and because you guys are racist, this is why you kick Asian dog. He said it's fun, like as if it's okay to make fun of everybody else. Oh, let's just make today. We're just gonna make fun of like Indians. Oh, tomorrow let's make fun of white people. Like, dude, let's just not be racist. How about that? Racist. Show and I don't think racist. I never saw and racist. The racist yeah. I don't. But I'm just saying what they no, were that's trying fine. to paint and us as. You guys, you know what from, I know people who know you, they say you're good guys, stand up guys. Gaslighting, it is racist. <laughs> it is racist. It's called internalized racism. Let's look at the definition of the word racism because people love to like hijack the word racism as if it means specifically a white person being racist towards a black person. That is not the definition of, of racism. What is racism? I know people have changed, probably Google loves, loves to change the meaning of words. What is the definition? It has nothing to do with you, this, your skin color. Prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group. Typically one that is a minority or marginalized. You see, that's a new definition by Google, but that that's not the original meaning of the word has nothing to do with whether you're marginalized or whatever it is. So yes, an individual, a white person can be racist to another white person. It's called internalized racism. It's also called racism. A black person can be racist to another black person. In fact, I've experienced a lot of racism from black people. I think a lot of black people have experienced racism from black people. And if we disguise this word and exclude ourselves from these words, this enables the perpetuation on of black racism towards each other. And there's a difference between colorism. We're not talking about colorism, we're talking about racism. Being racist, but either way, because people love to <sighs> gaslight, that is extremely racist what they said. And offensive. So I don't have a problem with you as people. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have you on this podcast. And then, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, sure. We can have a discussion dap or yeah. whatever. But I'm really curious. I, this isn't it's a not gotcha racist thing. Like, to I'm me. I'm literally curious to have the conversation. It, well, it does yeah, bother yeah. me I, that I think it's not racist. It's self-loathing. Which, to me, I don't particularly give a fuck how any other race looks at us. I give a fuck how we look at ourselves. So if I saw Indian gross. saying some shit like that, that would bother me more. Andrew told me he doesn't like Indian girls Ooh, all the time. That's great. Gross. Don't date him. That's good mm-hmm. for me. But when an Indian says <laughs> well, that you, shit, right? then it's like, yo, you... I do that because you say you don't like white women. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And but it, if you keep this up, but isn't I'm going to that... divorce my wife and fuck a lot of Indian chicks. <laughs> isn't, that, prove you isn't that refreshing from a minority, though? But I have a problem with somebody that I feel is self-loathing, and I'm not going to be as offended because you're not from where I'm from. Mm-hmm. But if I was black and okay, I so was Alex, say, I'd be like, yo, that shit is... More than racist is self-loathing, and that bothers me. What do you guys say about that? Like, do you guys? So let's remove the racism thing here. Yeah. What about? Do you think it has anything to do with self-loathing? Is there any like kind of like uh, internalized hatred, which might not even be your fault? Might be like the surroundings you were in and made you feel like these girls. Of course, it's not internalized hatred for Marlon because he's not black. He's from the Middle East. You're watching The Kenemo Show and I'm your host, Kenemo. This video is brought to you by mintedculture.com where you can check out all of my content. I have several channels across social media. Brand Video Pro, The Kenemo Show, Stream OVG and Stream OVG Business. But if you head on over to mintedculture.com, you can check out all my content in one place. Also, when you go on the website, you can book a one-on-one consultation or strategy call with me and I could give you tips, tricks, and strategies in business, filmmaking, media, web three, NFTs, 
all the above. So head on over to mintedculture.com to find out more. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something I want to, this is a digression from this, yeah, but yeah, it's right. something I want to bring up earlier, which is you're going to say, I, I prefer not dating black girls, but then you'll bring those same girls on your podcast and get views off of them and get money off of them. Explain to me how, and genuinely explain, I'm not trying to ask a rhetorical question. Mm. How is that not fucked up? See, that goes to the same question. We don't like black girls, so why are they on the show? To make money off of them and exploit them. We don't need to, th th them to make money at all. Well, clearly you do. You do. You need people on your show. If not, like you guys are not that interesting that people will just watch you two talking to each other. Your show's popular because you have women that come on. That's your most popular hour, right? And typically you have black women that come on, so... Your clips with the black girls where there's controversy are considerably more views we than your other clips. We don't make them act, act. That's just, just Yeah, it's act. live, man. It's a we, live show. We do it live. We, no, no, no. You, this, right, you know, they're just gaslighting right now. They're just literally just gaslighting. <laughs> they don't barge into your studio unannounced and then invite themselves in the podcast. They want to come on the and show. You, yeah, and so, you let hey, them on. Bruh, black, white, Asian, come on the show. We got bruh, you. You want to come on this podcast, you hit up Andrew. If I didn't want you on, you wouldn't be on. I have, we have say, it's our podcast, it's your podcast. You could easily say, no, I don't want them on. I don't fuck with these hood girls, whatever, like that. So I just don't want to deal with you, period. I think it's a little bit trying to have it, have your cake uh, and uh, eat uh, it too. Facts. What I, what I love about this interview, cause it's like really long and I watched the whole thing. Um, I love that this guy, I don't know his name. I think his name is ah Akash, Akash. He grilled them. He, him and the other black guy on the show, he, they grilled them. They did not let them get away with this. Um, and I think, uh, to me, the, I don't know the white guy's name, but he's being a little bit of an ally to them. You know, they're a little, you know, he's like, I remember he said, basically said that when they, when they said they're not night Riders or whatever, he said that's funny and it's comedy. Yeah, that's, that's humor amongst racist people. That's what racist people would say. And they think it's funny. That's not funny. It's extremely, ridiculously racist. I get what I said. Okay. Okay. Say, I, I so, think it was a little, I think it's a little bit uh, and aggressive, the question, but I do understand. I see where it's coming from. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. So we, have, we actually have a team that does it for us. So yeah. we, we don't actually deal with this gaslighting. That's not the point. You don't have to be the one dealing with the team. You know that black girls come on your show and you exploit them when they come on your show. That's just the bottom line. And he's, they're trying to like gaslight and say, oh, we don't need them. We didn't book them. We're not responsible for that. No, no, and no. You've even said in another video that this guy, the fresh guy, goes out finding guests for the show. The girls, we actually have people that do it for us, that cast the girls to come on the show. And then they come and we meet them and then we do the show and everything is live. So there's not really, there's no, you know, improv I guess, or edits or anything like that. I guess what he's saying. So we have a team that yeah, does it I for think us. That but you, you could also like, uh, like in dating, you could also set a standard for the girls that you want to have yep. on the pod. And, and I guess what you're saying is like, you're having these girls that act in a way that you don't like. Why continue to have them? You're going to make money Which I think off of is them. A reason That's not what he's asking. He's talking about. You ex this is that's why this guy's annoying as hell. <laughs> no offense, but he's just like enabling them to be. I know it's his show and he doesn't want his guests to feel uncomfortable, but he's enabling it in the wrong way. That's not what he's saying. He's basically saying that you guys are exploiting black women. You're trying to have your cake and eat it too, and they're trying to gaslight, and he's enabling them in the gaslighting. Let me just skip ahead a little bit. There's so much in this interview, but I just love when this Ahmad guy just grills the hell out of them. It's like fantastic. Awesome. We're not scared. We haven't been hurt. It's more like we understand the dangers of dating women and we want guys to know, look, just look for these things so you don't get finesse. That's the biggest thing because if you don't know going into it, you're gonna be like, yeah, she loves me for me. Uh, probably not. So it's like, okay. Most dudes that watch their shows don't have money. So let's be real. So like, whoever they get is gonna like them for them. No, understand who you are, what you want. Why wouldn't she love you for you? You're great, bro. Andrew. Hey, bro. <laughs> Stop the cap, hey, bro. bro. Stop the cap. Hey, 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 you know what it sounds like? Why wouldn't she love you? Hey, you know what What's wrong like? with you, bro? Andrew, you know what he sounds hey. like? Somebody who's been hurt by women. Yeah. Bro, tell me what happened, bro. Never. What Drake do to this girl, man? Never, you never you been hurt by never, a woman? Never, you never. telling me your girl on, didn't come back with hot sauce in her pussy? <laughs> you telling me? Are you hey, telling me? OVO, I don't know what's going on here, bro. 
Um, no, come on, bro. Yeah, no, what I mean, happened? Our, our th- here's the thing. In this world, <laughs> it's either a pimp or be pimped. Yeah. So if we can arm no, guys with the tools. What is that, right. dog? That's Amen. what I'm saying. Your views are very black and white. You're too old to be thinking like this. Amen. Well, we can have different worldviews, but if we look at it, it's pimp or be pimp, baby. Imagine going into a marriage <laughs> or a healthy relationship and saying, I'm either going to pimp or get pimped. So I have to treat you like trash. He's, I think they're just talking about people that are not serious, people that are just casually dating, not people that are trying to foster any sort of healthy, serious relationship. So I'd rather equip the guys with the tools so they can go out there and navigate the dating marketplace in a way pimp? where yeah, they won't get You don't think that's finesse. a dangerous mindset for the world Jesus, to have? Did I yeah. pimp my wife? Yeah. Is that what happened? Yeah. Or hey, is she man. pimping you? <laughs> Same with all of us. <laughs> but like, not for real. Like, I, what if we're also telling you that that's not the experience? And that maybe there's experiences you've had and being in a fucked up dating scene like Miami, right? That's and we know thing. it could get wild, especially if you're going to like these types of parties. You got a lot of girls that are like literally paid to be there. And they might be paid to do other stuff as well. So if you're interacting with these girls, I can understand how you like grow a little bit of fucking resentment. You're like, what? Where are the good girls at? There, there's no resentment, man. It's just awareness. And I know it it, 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 it might come off that way, but it's just merely just being aware of what's Dude, going on, adapting to the, the situation, and making the best move that's gonna not put you in a compromising position. Because we've heard so many terrible stories from guys, guys yeah. making mistakes, etc., with women that it's come back and really bit them in the ass. So we just want guys yeah. to maneuver it. Yeah, in a way where I think that that's I think that's altruistic of you. Yeah. Like Come I think on, really? I, I really do. Like Seriously? you're like I want you to be safe. I want you to be protected. Like I'm going shark diving. You're like, bro, can I give you this fucking metal suit that you put on so just in case the shark does bite you, you want you're, you're looking out. Yeah, you're actually. But the insult's about to come now. Looking out for these people. You care. My feeling is that you have a little bit skewed version. If you think it's pimp or be pimped, yeah. it's like, bro. Like they say, everything that comes before the word, everything that comes before the word but is horseshit. <laughs> said it in Game of Thrones. And all that kissing his ass, this is what he really wanted to say. You know, like how can you develop a loving relationship with somebody if you're constantly going, am I pimping or is she pimping? That's here's, dangerous. Here's the thing. One person yeah. in the relationship, whoever cares less, has the leverage. And we want the guy to always care. This guy is very clearly did not grow up in a healthy nuclear family he must have had maybe his dad had many wives i know he's from the middle east he's definitely referenced it his dad probably had many wives so he never got to see like a real uh healthy you know family structure so he doesn't understand that and that's what he's he's coming across like that's what's coming across and i think he's 31 you're too old to be thinking like this. Like, you're too old to be this immature, right? Um, Care less. Oh. We want the man to always That's have the leverage. Childish as fuck. And you guys, you guys might not like that hearing that. Childish. But we, but we truly feel. I'm not. I'm not. These aren't new to. beliefs, bro. You're not telling yeah. me some shit none of us have ever heard. We all heard this from fraternity guys exactly. in college. I'm okay. saying there's room in exactly. your. And I don't wow. have a problem with a lot of the stuff you say. I just think there is room for growth. And you guys' refusal to acknowledge it almost kind of proves it to me, confirms it to me that you guys are not willing to grow right now. And that's fine. That's some ego shit. We're just saying there's room for growth. A very mature answer is, yeah, probably. If you say that to me, I'm sure I got room to grow. Y'all are literally saying, nah, we know how it is. We're in Miami. I bet if you go to Idaho and see only two bitches are getting flown out of Idaho, you'd be like, oh, the world isn't like this. We're just asking you to look and take an assessment of what you say and what you spread and be like, okay, maybe there's room for growth. And y'all ain't even willing to do that for an hour and a half. Yep. Uh, I mean, I truly feel that that's your if, opinion, if, uh, Yeah, that's your opinion. See what I'm saying? Oh, I don't yeah. care for what we you guys have a platform. With- this guy is such a child. Right. This guy is such a child. Like, literally just so, like, ego-driven, just all in his head. Just like, no, I refuse. Like, dude, just grow up. You're acting like an idiot. You're acting like a child. Come on. Say whatever With men and women, one party always ca- one party cares less than the other than the other does, and I mean, whoever I, cares less has a leverage. First of all, I've watched other videos where they say they just stole all their dating coaching advice. This is not real stuff that they learned. They're just they they're just stealing the stuff online. But this is not new. These are not new concepts. This has been around from forever. So it's like when they're schooling these guys who are married who are in healthy relationships, I'm assuming, 
by just by just even the way they're speaking who are mature they're probably about 10 years older way more mature you're not saying anything new so why do you keep like repeating this as though you're like some you know expert you're not and we but want no, the guys I, to I, always be in a position where the woman is constantly chasing I, them not I, the other yeah, way around I, I think you're saying like a the man a, has to be in a leadership role where the woman anybody that has to chase in a relationship you're already in an unhealthy situation this is not healthy <laughs> but i guess i get it like he's his audience is predominantly young so it's i guess like it makes sense he's teaching these young kids that it makes sense when these kids start to grow up unfortunately when it comes down to it when you look in america even in the world and i made a video about this you know the white kids they'll do this in, when they're young at college and then they'll grow up and then they'll get married and then they'll have healthy nuclear families and they'll continue to build society and dominate and rule the world but unfortunately the black kids there's a subculture of black kids that didn't grow up in a healthy nuclear family this subculture they're going to take this information and they're going to take it to heart and what are they going to do they're going to take it to their grave and, and you know because <laughs> black men die alone specifically older black men let's say 50 and over we dine alone all alone in these nursing homes and in these facilities where the only people we see are these nurses. Lonely. Two reasons. You was a piss poor father. You ain't never want to settle down. It's happening. So it's like, dude, don't listen to these guys. They really don't know anything. And they're, they're 31 and 20, 29 or something. They're young. They don't know anything. Um, and talk to them in 10 years. If they're still t sounding like this in 10 years, I don't know. God help them. Woman is feel feels. How do I say that she got the prize? I the man hear, has to be in that. that position, not the woman. I think we both want to feel like we got the prize, though. and yes. I think that's the best relationship. Yeah. It's like Everybody the best be sale the or the best business move exactly. is like you do something where you feel like you got the best, and, and they feel like they got the best, right? Like that's the perfect deal that's made. It's perfect, but it doesn't happen like that all the I'm time. I'm not saying it does, and and I think that like yeah. to to act as if one person doesn't like the other person more. Uh, for us to sit here and be like, no, every relationship, they no, equally love. Not. I, I think that love can be different, and I don't think that there's a scale that you can judge it, but I, I, I think that we would get pushed back to be like, no, every single one is perfectly equal. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that'd be... Our biggest thing is we want the woman chasing the man's <laughs> validation, never the other way around, but for the relationship to be the, in the best position because men lead, women follow. It's always been that way, and we want the guys to have the leverage in the relationship because if you do your girl's always gonna feel like she has the best option that she can get. That's just the way women make it like. They want the best and the brightest. And for her to feel that way, yeah. she needs to- Again, he's bringing all of this sort of Middle Eastern culture, and it's like, look, it's a Western culture as well, but he's like, his attachment to these ideals stems from his background and his culture. Um, and it just doesn't sort of fit into uh, the American model of where America's going, especially the West. Uh, but it's sad that he's continue, he's continuing to perpetuate these ideals. Um, and look, you, you can say, okay, when, you, when it comes to Africa and when you look at uh, polygamy and how it's actually destroyed a lot of society because it causes broken families and all this stuff, you could look at Africa as that model and say, okay, well, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, polygamy doesn't work. But when you look at the Middle East, they do have polygamy um, and they have been able to still build societies, you know, so so polygamy in some respects, it does work. But when I when it comes down to it, most of the Arabs that I know, they're not brought up in polygamous households. It's, it, they don't they don't abuse polygamy. It's really the, the ones that do abuse po polygamy. I, I, don't, I don't know any I don't to be honest, personally, all my friends are Arabs. None of them are, are brought up in polygamous families. It's only the ones that maybe the king, you know, you hear about the king having like a hundred wives or whatever. But obviously he's going to be fine because he, the, he, the whole country's money is his money pretty much. I don't know the details of it. But, okay, I've had enough of this nonsense. Um, but what I will say, it's so unfortunate to me that they are sticking to like their perspective. They don't want to let go. And the reason is... I mean, it's it's, it's a cash 22, it's a good and bad thing, right? 
because of social media, they own their own audience and technically can't necessarily get canceled. They can't really get canceled. I know TikTok banned them from TikTok. Thank you, TikTok. Thank you so much, TikTok. But TikTok banned them from TikTok. But they own their audience. So nobody can cancel them. Yes, I'll say they're probably never going to be mainstream. They're probably, unless like Mar they fix themselves, like maybe in a few years, because they've gotten a lot of publicity from this. So maybe if in a few years they try and really like repackage themselves, rebrand themselves, maybe society will accept them. But I don't think, unlike people that have been able to do that, like maybe like a Chris Brown has been able to repackage himself and a Trey Songs, they have pretty privilege. These guys don't have pretty p privilege, so it's going to be difficult for them to repackage themselves because they're not necessarily pleasing to look at. So it's not like people are going to want to see them do well, right? So I don't think that they're going to get away with this, um, and I definitely don't think they're going mainstream. I definitely don't think that any serious brands will want to work with them. Another thing that happens like typically in traditional media or t traditional media stars is that they'll lose a lot of brand sponsorships. These guys probably don't have any brand sponsorships already. They probably work with, or if they are, maybe they'll have like Porn Hub or something sponsoring them, maybe stuff like that. But I just don't imagine that they're going to have too many um, brand sponsorships to lose out on. So I just don't see them really going mainstream. Uh, this is probably as big as it gets for them. But who knows? Who knows? They might, they might blow. Who knows? You know, they go and change their image completely. Use this... 15 seconds of fame that they've gotten and completely rebrand themselves. Either way, it's so unfortunate. These guys are like idiots, <laughs> complete idiots, but whatever the case is. Those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Do you think that Marlon is black? I want to start this campaign that he is not black and he should not be allowed to talk about black women. <laughs> Generally do not believe that he's black and he needs to prove that he's black. <laughs> Just as like Donald Trump made Obama prove that he was a U.S. citizen, which is like, whatever, terrible. But I want Marlon to prove that he's black. I don't think he's black. So Marlon, if you watch this, prove that you are black. You are not a black man. You are from the Middle East. So you should not even dare say a damn thing about black women. Do not use your mouth to say anything about black women. You're not black. You're from the Middle East. And if you're not from the Middle East, prove it. Prove it. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. You're watching The Kenimo Show, and see you later.